Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Borderwise, and welcome back to From the Depths. And welcome to a new, I guess, mini series of tutorials as I share with you my journey to understand the breadboard. Yes, the formidable breadboard, the intimidating looking UI breadboard, the thing that is, uh, Quite a milestone to overcome once you get the hang of ACBs, after that is PIDs, and then after that, breadboard. And probably after that is Lua or something crazy. But anyway, I'm going to keep this as short and sweet as possible. And just whenever I, uh, whenever I find out some useful bread or am informed of useful bread, and once I understand the useful bread, I will be sharing it with you in this series. So today we're going to be doing breadboard thrust vectoring, which is when you get your breadboard to control your propulsion components and have them control pitch and yaw, which is very nice. Uh, and uh, uses less blocks than ACBs, and it's just generally all round lovely, and once you get into the hang of it, and uh, get into the habit of it, it's kind of hard to stop. So, how do we do this? Well, firstly, we've got our little uh, pre-made prefab jet here that is not moving because uh, it currently has no form of pitch or yaw control, which means that when I do this, it flies straight up into the sky and does loop-de-loops. And it's probably never going to come back down if I do that. So let's do that. And let's go hang out in space. And so let's get some thrust vectoring on this thing. So, nothing much in here. This is just a test vehicle. But here is our breadboard. Here is our AI breadboard. There's also a non-AI uh, breadboard. Where the hell is it? I've forgotten where it is. It's somewhere around here. Oh, yeah. There's the AI breadboard. Where is the non-AI breadboards? Whatever. Oh, there it is. 40 and 10. Alright, so the non-AI breadboard is just slightly more expensive. Anywho, they both work the same. So it doesn't matter which one you use. That much. Alright, so we're in here, and when you first look at the breadboard, like, uh, this is really, like, I don't know. If you don't know what this is, you're going to have a really hard time figuring it out for yourself. So it's best to be adopted... Uh, by people who are good at math. Thankfully, I have a comment section and people are going to tell me what I do wrong, whether I like it or not, but in uh, your case, you probably need to go uh, make a friend who uh, knows how this all works. Or just keep watching, I guess. So, this is like anything in front of the depths. You don't need to use every single bit of this if you don't want to or don't know how. Uh, but inevitably, you're going to have to mess around with it and play with it a little bit just to see what you can get away with. I think our jet's upside down. No, it isn't. Oh, I was wrong. But anyway, so to start off with, we need an input. So, we're going to be using propulsion input. So that's in this top uh, section. You want this one. Don't get it confused with this one, because that is different. Uh, in fact, I'll show you the different... Where is it? There it is. And this fella, you'll notice that the little... Uh, that this has an output and this has an input. Uh, we want the one that generates an output. So what this is, is the AI command. So in this particular case, the AI uh, command for up is zero. And we want to set one of these to pitch up and down and your right and left. And uh, the roll, by the way, for this particular plane is going to be taken care of uh, by the aerolons. That's just fine. So, we've got this, and then we want to stick a multiply thing in here. So that's down here in the components. Uh, multiply just whatever number you get over here. In this case, the number is currently zero. It multiplies it by a certain amount, and allows it to actually generate a number that is somewhat useful. So in this case, we're going to connect this to this, and this to this. And what we're actually doing with the breadboard is with these lovely big jets back here, this works with... Uh, most propulsion components, by the way, not all of them, um, it's a bit, it's kind of common sense, it does not work with, like, steam propellers that are on, uh, long shafts, because, like, how's it gonna pitch? It doesn't work with, uh, where is it? Here we go, it doesn't work with the hull, uh, versions of custom jets, because they can't move, uh, but, what we're doing is that we're changing these angles here, on our propulsion, in order to basically combine our yawing and our pitching and our forward thrust all into one, well, all into one handy block so we don't need extra bits. And it's a very effective way to control your craft. So in order to do that, you'll notice uh, that on these blocks, uh, the maximum and minimum yaw 
and pitch angle is 15. Doesn't go more than that. So, if you want maximum control here, you set this multiplier to 15. You don't have to set it that high, but you do need to set it high enough so your craft can actually control itself. And note that since uh, this propulsion is on the rear of the craft, we want to set the multiplier for your to a negative number. Because if you don't do that, uh, the thing doesn't steer properly. It steers, it points in the direction... Alright, so say we want to go right, we want these things to, to point, well, to their left. And if you have a positive number here, they don't do that. They point to their right and they turn the wrong way, which is why this is a negative number. Alright, so how to actually get the breadboard to talk to the propulsion components, you go here in the components section. Generic block setter. This block is wonderful because it allows you to basically set uh, stuff for pretty much, well, most blocks really. Very handy. So it's currently set to AI mainframe and we don't want that. What we want it to control is the huge jet engine because that's what's on the back of our jet. That is what is going to make it move. You'll notice it shrinks quite nicely. And we want to uh, connect this output to this input right here, and connect this to this, and we want to go here, and we want to set this lower number, shut up phone, uh, we want to set this lower number to here. Pitch angle number negative 15 to 15, and that enables us uh, to actually enables this input through this multiplier to change the number on that jet. And we do the same here, we want to go all the way down to the yaw angle number negative 15 to 15. Uh, don't do what I did and get confused with uh, these kind of things like pitch scale and yaw scale and stuff like that. That's different. I'll figure those out another day. So we set that to that and now that's it, really. That is all you need. Like, you can pause the video and you can screenshot your screen however you like. Right now, this is all you really need. Just bear in mind that you need to uh, select whatever propulsion component you actually want. So it could be, you know, a ship's propeller, it could be an ion jet, it could be a custom jet, it could be a steam jet. I think it works with those. So anyway, now all we need to do is turn our plane on and you'll see that there we go, because this thing's made of alloy, it even gets out of the water correctly. And I've already set up the maneuver and the behavior to do whatever it likes. I'll just show you that quickly. So it's set to just fly reasonably high, set to be an aircraft, and we are flying along. We are yawing, and we are pitching. Uh, this does flick around like crazy, you tend to find. So we go here, your angle set to has is changing, pitch angle is changing, and the split second we get to... Uh, comfortable altitude, uh, these things will start flickering a little bit, so yeah. So there we go! Very nice, very nice indeed, and once you get the hang of it, and especially if you just prefab uh, whatever breadboard you've got, um, it's reasonably straightforward once you know how. If you don't know how at all, of course, this you might as well be trying to land uh, on the moon uh, with a propeller beanie, but once you know how, it's pretty straightforward, and there's no need to panic. The thing you need to remember about breadboard is that it's not simple, despite what people keep telling me, but it is doable and you can do it. Go find a mirror right now or just, you know, just when the video's over and tell yourself you can do it. It is possible. So yeah, that is just a thrust vectoring with breadboard. Let's actually send you on a trip on your rocket ship. There we go, and if you see the AI path, you can see there that our jet is moving around all willy-nilly. And it's very nice. Jet is doing exactly what I want to do, and there you see uh, the pitch control changing like mad. So anyway, that'll do for this little uh, brief guide on how to thrust vector with a breadboard. And, oh, one last thing. You can uh, use the block naming uh, mechanic to uh, use specific uh, things with that. So you can call this Jeff. <laughs> Caps lock was on. And you can do a filter here. You could say block name filter Jeff. And that has completely bollocked up. <laughs> That's completely bollocked up my pitch. So I'm not going to do that. Woo, that was close. Almost forgot that. Should get a script. And 
You are no longer Jeff. You are the Jet with no name. Alright, so there we go. That's all you need to know for now. That's all I need to say for now. So, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. If you want to see more videos like this, support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps, and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters, and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Simple Bread Journey, or something like that. I don't know what the title is. Farewell.